Hey everybody, it's X and Shadow, and I'm here with a kind of, sort of, playing of Super Ghouls and Ghosts, and this is an awesome game. Probably one of the hardest games of all time, but still an awesome game. Now, I'm going to not lie to you guys, I have not beaten this game, in fact I haven't gotten past the second level, and that's why I'm not really doing a full let's play of this. If I could, I would, Tell I'm telling you. So instead, in honor of Halloween, this scary holiday, I'm just taking a look at the game, just the first level, and this is really all you need to know about Super Ghouls and Ghosts. You'll get the, uh, you'll get the view of the entire experience just by watching it. So yeah, that was the intro cutscene. Not much to say about it. It just sets up the very minimal story in the game. Now here's something you might not know. If you go to the options, you can set it so that you can start with nine lives instead of three. Now the game hands you continues on a silver platter, so this is more of a convenience to you as it is any sort of cheating. It's kind of like turning the lives to seven on Contra 3. You're going to need them, so... And there will eventually be a time when you don't. So, now, the guy in the Arthur is named, uh, the guy in the armor, I should say, is named Arthur, and I'm pretty sure the, uh, girl with the blue hair is, uh, Guinevere, I think? I don't know, um, I don't know, but all you need to know is she's a princess, she gets captured, and that monster there? Never fight him in the game. Yeah, what a disappointment. So, of course, it is off to Manly Man Mar Arthur to save the day. Get used to seeing that map screen, ladies and gentlemen, because you'll be seeing it quite a lot. And anyway, here now we have one of the best video game songs in all time of all times, the Super Ghouls and Ghosts theme. I love this song. This is an awesome song. Now, um, of course you might be thinking this plays just like any other platformer. You throw stuff, you try to attack people. You see that green armor there? That's an upgrade to your armor. You use it, and then you get more powerful upgrades. The thing up in the top center is your weapon. Um, there are a bunch of different weapons. There's a lance, a dagger, a crossbow, a fire, a scythe, and some weird thing that nobody ever uses anyway. Um, with the green armor, your, power, your attacks are powered up. There's another level of armor, which we'll be getting to later. Now, you might be thinking, this isn't so hard, you're owning this game. Well, to be honest, this was a really good run to start off on. Um, now, you, now, this is the golden armor. This armor gives a magical attack, so if you charge up the button by holding down the attack button, you won't get hurt. Oh, but look at that. One hit, you lose your armor. Doesn't matter how powerful it is. Another hit after that, you're dead. So, you can have, um, you can have normal armor, green armor, golden armor. If you get hit once, you die. Like that. Be... Prepared to see Arthur's pile of bones a lot, because you're going to die a lot. Yeah, um, now this one actually worked pr out pretty well, because I was able to get the entire run-through done in less than 15 minutes. But my first take for this, which I couldn't use due to technical reasons, was an hour long. An hour. I can't... It, it's ridiculous. But anyway, you'll see me jumping around randomly a whole lot. That's because if you cross certain sections of the screen, those treasure chests appear. And those treasure chests are the only way to power up. So, as you can see, I really want to get the treasure chests. Because not only does it let you get new weapons, um, it also lets you get the armor upgrades, which are essential to beating the game. Now, I'm sure you could beat the game without the armor upgrades, but it helps a whole damn lot to have a stronger weapon. Now, the one that I'm throwing right now is the lance. It's the starting weapon, so it's okay. Um, it goes in straight line, and you can have two on screen, except for in the um, when you have the upgrade, when you can only throw one, but it's stronger and faster. Um, I'd recommend getting rid of the lance as fast as you can, but only for a few specific upgrades, because um, <laughs> you can downgrade pretty easily. Um, now, I'll only be showing off uh, four weapons in this game. I couldn't find the scythe or the um, other weird thing, but whatever. All You should know that all of the weapons have unlimited, an, uh, have unlimited ammo, so you don't need to worry about that. And you see all those zombies? Those are spawning zombies, they, respawning zombies. You can never get rid of them, so don't bother trying to. Uh, what I have now is the crossbow. Um, I'm not a fan of the crossbow because it goes upwards, so you can't really shoot straight in front of you. You always have to do it in an angle. That guy there, that's the diabolical clown. Is that his real name? No, but I don't care because that's what I've always called him. The Diabolical Clown will start coming out of treasure chests after you've gotten hit, and he'll throw in a magical attack at you. It won't kill you, but it'll turn you into things like a schoolgirl, or a seal, or a baby, or something like that. It's actually really funny, that, um, but unfortunately I couldn't get any footage of it. But yeah, you don't want to get hit by the Diabolical Clown. It's kind of a pain in the ass, if I do say so myself. Snake Eater! 
But anyway, yeah, um, I don't really like the crossbow. It's useful in a few situations, but not really. Don't worry if you get hit, you can get your armor back, but then the diabolical clown will start showing up all over the place, and it's a little bit annoying. Um, now, I actually do really good in this first part, it only takes me a few tries to get through, which is surprising. But yeah, um, those skulls, they can kill you. Yeah, a little skull touching you can kill you, so stay caution. I recommend writing, um, memorizing the chest locations, because that's going to save you a whole lot of trouble. Um, oh, and just a little fun fact. You know, um, the little cross-type things that look like the ancient Egyptian symbol that are on all of the zombie coffins? Uh, those were actually crosses in the Japanese, um, version, but due to the wonderful thing called censorship, it's not here. Hooray! But yeah, um, this part, if you don't stand on those pillar things, you will die, so be careful. Um, those guys to go down in one hit, it's not really that bad. Um, this game, oh, I should, oh, I forgot to talk about the jumping. How could I forget about the jumping? And um, this is a pretty good place to talk about it, too. Um, Arthur controls somewhat realistically when he jumps, in that you don't get to change your direction when you're in midair. Oh yeah, uh, watch how I did that. That's the only way you can really get across that section. But yeah, once you g jump, you're stuck jumping. You have a double jump that might work, um, to help. That might help, but generally, once you jump, you're pretty much screwed. Which takes some pretty precise timing, which is a lot of why this game's so hard. Now, even though the game is hard, it doesn't feel cheap hard. If that makes any sense. It is conceivable that some uns insanely masterful player could get through this um, with only a few tries. Now, gen now that that player doesn't generally exist, but it does seem possible, which is the important thing. Now, this part is where I d um, is where I tend to die because, well, um, you'll see. I jump down there to make that treasure chest appear. That come guys comes and gets me and hits me and I die. That's going to happen like three or four more times. Now, you might be thinking, why didn't you edit any of the death out? This is tedious and boring. <laughs> well, you know what? You're going to have to get used to dying if you're going to want to play Super Ghouls and Ghosts. It, it just happens a lot. And my god, the treasure chest really wanted to give me some of these crossbows in this playthrough. See, I, I wanted to jump over it so I didn't have to get it and then I got hit. That's a great, great way to start. Um, I guess I should talk about the graphics. Now, if I remember correctly, this was one of the first Super Nintendo games to come out, so obviously just having 16 bits was a pretty big achievement at the time, but this is still a pretty decent looking game. Um, granted it's not the prettiest game in the SNES library, but it's a pretty good, damn good looking game. Um, now, if you might remember, Super Goals and Ghosts is part of the Ghost and Goblins series, I think it's called. I don't know what the official name for it is, but Ghost and Goblins was originally an arcade game, which I actually have played, and it's just as hard as any other version. And it got ported to the any it got ported to the NES, which is probably the most famous version. And um, then it also got a sequel on the Genesis called Ghouls and Ghosts, and this is Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Yeah, I really didn't want to get that. Um, crossbow and I got hit anyway so yeah I really hate the crossbow you should be able and uh, having two are in an arc is fun but have one go up at straight ahead of you and have one go at a 45 degree angle and bullshit that there's the dagger I'll be talking about the dagger later it's the best weapon in the game um but yeah I died again I told you <laughs> you're gonna be hearing this music a lot so it's great that the music in this game is good Oh, here's the torch. Uh, the torch, um, it goes in kind of an arc pattern and then drops quickly, but if it lands on the ground, it creates a sort of stream of fire, which is, and it's one of the more powerful weapons. And I'm pretty, it, it's magic power when you've got the golden, um, when you've got the golden armor is pretty good too. So I'd recommend, so I wouldn't totally dis-recommend picking it up, but it's not the best weapon by any means. Uh, those skull fire things, they'll start rolling down once you reach a certain level. And bullshit, I pressed the jump button. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. <laughs> anyway, yeah. I can see where the frustration level comes in, but honestly, this game doesn't get frustrating unless if you're playing the first level, like, for an hour, like I did. Yeah, this is when I go to extreme lengths to not get this. And as far as I know, these things don't fade away over time. You know how in Castlevania, after a while, the weapons will just fade away if you don't want to pick them up? Yeah. So I actually was able to jump over it, which I thought was pretty skillful. 
Yeah, with the jumping controls, it's hard to be precise, but when you are, it's immensely satisfying. And that's a good way to talk about this game. It's satisfying. The first time I beat this, the first level, I was more satisfied than after I'd beaten some full-fledged games. It's hard- now, I don't like overly hard games, and this game is overly hard. But, however, I also- I hate overly frustrating games more than overly hard games, if that makes sense. And, <laughs> again, I died that way. But the thing is, is that having some level of challenge is new to me, since I grew up in an era where hard games are generally a, a rare sight. And so going back to the past to try to get to play some of the harder games, it's, it's nice. Um, now, however, um, they do have a sequel to Ghouls and Ghosts on the PSP called Ultimate Ghosts and Goblins, I believe. And that game gives you more hits, I think. And apparently it's still really, really hard, even with multiple hits. Oh no, I died before getting the dagger again. Damn it. You, you'll you see why the dagger's so awesome once I get it. And there's only a few minutes left, too. Hooray. Now, yeah, this game has just had such an, impre an impression on me. Because even though it's a relatively simple game, its mind-crushing difficulty is just legendary. This is... This is often considered one of the hardest games of all time. And do I agree? Well, it's the hardest game I've ever played, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, it's a good game. It's a very good game. It's on the Virtual Console now, so I recommend picking it up. And there's... No oh, you spawning bitch. <laughs> yeah, this is one of those games where you can yell at the screen and not feel cheated out, which is always nice. Ah, yeah, but sometimes that stuff like that happens where you get trapped. And now, it's I that's a little bit cheap, uh, I'm not going to lie. You tend to get trapped a lot in this game. And I'm not going to lie if I said, I would be lying if I said I enjoyed it. But it's part of the challenge. Here's the dagger. You're going to want to get the dagger. The dagger can have a ton of... Uh, um, they can be on screen. There can be a ton on screen at uh, at once. It goes really fast and it does good damage. This is by far the best weapon in the game. It's just it's like the lance, but a lot better. You just get it, and it also gets better upon each power up. For example, now we've got the laser dagger. It's laser beams, and I think it does more damage and it passes through and it passes through specific enemies, which is nice. And, once you get it with the golden armor, which is what I'm gonna do, you charge that sucker up, and you get a fucking dragon, yeah! This is awesome. And now, finally, we're gonna be seeing the rest of the level, and I actually go through this part in one run, which is surprising, because I tend to die a lot here, too, which is weird. Um, but yeah, uh, this part, just do what I'm doing. It's gonna take some practice, but I'm telling you, it's the best way to do it. Oh, man, that was close. But yeah, um, watch out for those exploding things. Sometimes they send little um, projectiles out at you, and sometimes they don't. Just hold right there and jump at the very end. That's how you go. But anyway, yeah, we've got the boss. Now, the first boss is a little bit of a joke compared to the rest of the level. You shouldn't have too much problem with it. Uh, one abusable thing about the magic, you get invincibility frames as you're using your magic, so that's a good way to avoid attacks. However, you're also left wide open after the invincibility frames are done, so be careful. As you can see, I was stuck between a rock and a hard place, so I got hit, but thankfully I didn't get, I don't die in this run, spoilers, I make it to the boss in one run, which is good. But yeah, um... This is a very, very good game. Um, I haven't beaten it yet, but I want to. And that's the thing. It's it's just fun. And there are very few games that are challenging, rewarding, and fun without being frustrating. So I've been X and Shadow, and I'll see you guys later.